What is up, my friends? Welcome back. I'm the Zim. This is the Zim video. This is a life update, basically a channel update. What's been going on? Trying to recap you. Very much stream of consciousness, but I will be breaking this up into three sections. Um, school. We'll get into what's been going down in school. We'll get into what's been going down on the YouTube channel, and then we'll get into what's been going down on um, in life. I have my little guide here to keep me on track. So let's start with school. Like, what's been going down with school right now? As you know, possibly know, um, I am, and this is kind of an advertisement as well today. Um, the reason why I wanted to get this out right now is I'm in the midst of my thesis semester. I'm in my final semester of graduate school, and I'm about to. It's Tuesday. I'm recording this on a Tuesday, um, Tuesday, March 29th, I believe it is. Um, we're recording this on Tuesday, and starting next week a week from today a week from recording this show this video right now will be the opening of my thesis show at the san diego state university campus in the jackson gallery it's only open for three days it's um april 5th through the 7th and on april 5th is my actual opening so if you happen to be watching this you happen to be live in the southern california area um or san diego specifically and you want to come to the opening, it's at 4 p.m. in the Jackson Gallery at the San Diego State University campus. Um, the best I can tell you is just Google it and you'll find it. Um, parking is kind of a pain in the butt. You have to walk to, you can't park right next to the gallery. You have to park in a parking structure and walk to the gallery. So if you decide to do any of that stuff, um, check it out. I mean, contact me, let me know if I can assist you in any way, but for the most part, um, should be pretty self-explanatory. Just Jackson Gallery at the San Diego State University School of Art and Design. Pretty easy to find. Um, yeah, do it up. But let me break down a little bit more about what's been going on. So like this piece behind me here is kind of the banner I'm gonna have for the opening of the show. I have um, a bunch of pieces that I've been working on through the, the year and a little bit of last year that are gonna be in the show. Pretty. Pretty excited about the show itself. I think it'll look great. Um, I'll share videos and photos of it on all my social places when it's posted, when it's up and active. Um, so if you can't make it to the actual show at any point, then feel free to follow me on all the socials and YouTube here and you'll get an update. I might do like a live stream from the gallery. Just kind of, uh, <clears throat> yeah, I don't know. We'll decide how I'm gonna do all that stuff. So that's kind of the plan there. That's what's going on. I've been super um, stressed about it. One of the things that, I mean, the show itself I'm not really stressed about, but the overall, like, what's been happening, kind of, like, let me update you on my journey as a graduate student. So I used to do this thing on this channel called MFA Chronicles. I use that for a couple of things. I use it for a podcast, but I also use it for just kind of a update. I hoped that maybe I could be a resource for more people thinking about being a graduate student in art, um, specifically at San Diego State University. And um, so I'd like to be a resource for that kind of thing. And so I want to kind of update you on that angle of it, like what's it's what it's been like. And for me, you know, everybody goes to graduate school for very different reasons, um, why they're there, what they get out of it. You know, for me, I was very much like a blank slate. You know, I wanted to go. My main priority for going to graduate school was to try to figure out what I was going to do with the rest of my life. And I think I've probably figured that out. I'm definitely going to try to teach um, art in a university setting. That's a goal of mine. I think that's going to be happening. So I think that goal, that check box has been marked. Um, so we'll get a little bit more into some of that when we get into the life part at the end of the video. But, um, but figuring out what I want to do. But I also really want to hopefully stay independent as well. I don't want to teach full time. That's not a goal of mine. I want to say independent and I feel like I've been able to establish a bit of maybe not so much I wouldn't go so far as saying a reputation but I think I'm I've established a, a foundation that if I keep doing what I'm doing people will um, maybe take notice so a couple things to mention I wanted to mention in this video I forgot was um, some awards that I got this last year I got the in my vlog which i'll talk about more in a second as well i announced that i got a student research scholarship for five thousand dollars which unfortunately i didn't get to see any of that money it was it went 
in the in the same way in the way that I would have liked to have seen it. It just went to pay off my student loan debt, it, like preemptively paying that off. So unfortunately, it's not helping right now. It's just kind of like a thing. But at least I get to put it on my CV. So that was really cool. I won the from the student exhi exhibition awards, um, student award exhibition. I won the art produce um, uh, gallery uh, exhibition. Like I get to do an exhibition this summer. I uh, won a, an exhibition award at the exhibition, so that's kind of a tongue twister there. But um, I get to actually put together a solo show at Art Produce in San Diego, North Park of San Diego. So check that out when it comes up. I'll keep you posted on it. I'm planning to do some thing similar to what I've been doing, live streaming, portrait making, drawing, performative type of thing, talking about, hopefully talking about social justice and just those kind of anti-racism ideas keeping that kind of conversation going for myself and whatnot. So look out for that. I think that's happening in June. And I also won an award called the, um, from the Student Research Symposium, which was a uh, all university-wide uh, thing. And I won it in my, you know, from the School of Art and Design, um, won what's called the Presidential Award or the President's Award. And if I understand correctly, that means now I can go on to the second run, like the all statewide version of this um, competition. So that was pretty cool. I got, uh, the award was like $500, which I haven't seen yet. I don't know if that'll, how that'll show up. It'll probably show up the same way that other award went where I don't actually get the money. I just kind of goes into my debt already. So whatever. Um, but so I won three awards, which is pretty amazing, which is pretty awesome. So that's making me feel good. Uh, for those kind of things. So, so yeah, I think that's for the award things. But going back to what I was talking about with being a resource for school, like this whole idea, I mean, I just want to be transparent and honest. This last semester has been the most challenging semester by far. And I can't figure out totally why um, in terms of is it because I just didn't know what I needed to ask and know, or I wasn't told, or was there wasn't a structure. I think based on um, the reaction that my cohort has been having, we're all very confused about how things are supposed to happen. So I don't believe it's just me, but there is an element of th things that kind of played out. Basically, there wasn't very good um, protocol and transparency on on the what expectations are for your thesis and those kind of things in terms of when dates happen, when you should be starting your writing versus your, um, you know, all the different factors that go, you have to write a paper, you have to put t together an exhibition, when the dates happen, when they're all supposed to happen. If you basically did it the correct way, uh, I would have needed to turn my paper in last Friday. Um, that wasn't going to happen. I was trying really hard to make that date. I just was starting to have nervous breakdowns, minor nervous breakdowns about it. I was just like, my body was just not handling the pressure to try to make that date with everything I needed to do was still getting ready for the show that's going to be happening next week. So I made the decision to allow myself to spend extra money, which is not ideal, but hopefully financial aid will help me with it to go into the semester or into the summer and take the there's an extension for your thesis for writing. I guess it's a lot of people use it for a lot of students have done it in the past. So many students have done it in the past that it's become this kind of expectation that that's what you do. That's caused more confusion about what the expectation of what you're really supposed to do is. So I've written many letters and emails and voiced my concern and opinion about how the school itself um, delivers the information and basically that they're failing at doing that for their students to make it clear and understandable. So um, yeah, it's been a very stressful last semester, most by far the most challenging for many reasons, but also very kind of rewarding in a lot of ways because it's making me really work hard and think a lot and make sure that I understand what I'm doing, um, both in terms of protocol and expectation, but also in terms of becoming a better artist you know, making sure that my paper fulfills the ideas of re enough research and understanding how that plays in, because I know I'm not the strongest in that way. Um, and writing is a challenging thing for me. But my paper, as it stands right now, is 40 pages long, which I'm massively surprised at. It'll probably come out to be about 40. After it's formatted, we'll probably stay around that 40 page mark because it's double spaced right now. And when it's fully formatted, it, I think it'll be a 
um, 1.5 spaces, but it also has narrower margins and sections are separated farther apart. Like right now it's just one running paper where each chapter will be a, a new section. So there'll be like blank places of pages and then there'll be all the images that I'll include with it. So like, the document itself will probably be close to 50, 55, maybe even 60 pages after. So it'll be a fairly decent, robust document, which I'll share with you. I'll get at least one printed for myself. I don't really need it. I personally don't want physical stuff. Like I'm really trying hard to not keep stuff anymore. But, uh, but yeah, so I think that kind of gives you, sums you up like what, where things are at. Like basically the lesson for myself at this point is if everything stays the same, um, like at San Diego State University or, or any university, when you're when you're approaching your thesis year, start asking the the questions about what did everything you need to know like in the beginning of the first year of your thesis year. I kind of waited long. I thought it would be I would be guided a little bit stronger than I was. Um, so there was that aspect. Yeah, I didn't get the guidance that I thought should seemed to make sense so that was one thing but then just learning from experience like if I knew now what I knew like if I knew now if I knew then what I know now I would have started at the beginning of my my whole thesis year writing the paper I would have started writing the paper basically got it done hopefully by the end of my first semester so that my second semester I'm just focused on the show itself and the writing would be really close to done, maybe some minor tweaks just to get it pushed through the end, but trying to do it all in the one semester was not, um, I thought I was giving enough myself enough time because I thought I had, my work was pretty, I didn't have as much work, like a lot of other students are scrambling to get work done their last semester, and I really did wasn't scrambling at all to get work done. I had my work done, I kind of flipped it, I kind of did my work the first semester, and then I was gonna write the second semester, but I should have kind of maybe not necessarily flipped it, flipped it, but done more work the first semester on both writing and finishing my work so that the second semester was more of like a refinement, finishing details um, kind of idea. And then I could have hopefully finished everything on the time within the protocol and the timelines that are recommended. But right now I'm, I'm in this kind of ambiguous land of like, I don't know what I you know, I'm just basically, basically because I'm allowing myself to, to go into the summer if I need to, I'll just get my paper done as soon as I possible. Once it's all done, I'll hand it off to the next place and say, okay, now what? And they'll say either, okay, we can get it in this semester, this semester, or it's too late. You need to then go on to your next semester. So that's kind of what I'll be, um, focused on. I think that pretty much covers grad school. I mean, I'll recap again when I'm done, <laughs> when I'm completely done. And I'll share with you as I go move along a um, little bit more here and there. But there's kind of a good segue between school, what's been going on with school and into the YouTube um, stuff that I've been doing. And one of the big things that I tried to do at the beginning of this um, semester was I was going to do a weekly vlog of my final semester and I couldn't keep up. Um, the main reason was I got so stressed out with trying to complete everything I just mentioned about my paper, my thesis work, that I just could not focus on trying to record video at the same time and devoting the energy to that. There, was a, there were moments in time um, over the last few weeks where every single moment was dedicated to trying to write the paper and it's like, if I had any free time, it was going to dedicate to the, it was like between making sure I was resting enough, making sure I was writing enough, and then going to the, anything I had obligations to, like showing up to classes, doing things for my kids, things like that. So there was no space whatsoever to continue to do the vlog. Um, I have footage that I've recorded. I was recording knowing that I was, I like, I didn't get one out. And then I was like, well, I'll just keep recording and carry my camera around. But like sitting down to edit and it just, my brain, I just could not, I didn't have the capacity to do it. Maybe I will try to go back in and complete that. Maybe it's just dead. I don't know. The one thing I realized, like when you see vloggers um, on the internet, like, you know, Casey Neistat style vloggers or whatever, 
you know, that's basically their job is to vlog. And so they're not trying to do other things and vlog at the same time. So they get, I mean, it just takes a massive amount of brain power and energy. Like for me and my, my skill at editing and, and, vlog and, and filming is probably around 60 to 70% of what other people's are in terms of being good at it. So just the, just the amount of energy it took to create those was, um, really, and then I would like to try to do original music for it as well. So there's just a, a lot of, yeah, it was just too hard. Basically the bottom line was I didn't have the time or energy to cr create them and keep them going. So they stopped, they stalled out. Maybe I'll try them again in the summer or something. I really love the idea of doing a vlog style video um, making, but I don't know, maybe it's just not for me. The live streaming thing is obviously the thing that I like the most and it's the easiest for me and which I hope to build off of. So that'll be the next thing we'll talk about here. Um, I planning, so a lot of you, probably most of you that are watching this video and I've made it this far, know me from my top four gaming streaming stuff. I do art streaming, I do game streaming are the two things that I've been doing the most. Game streaming has been by far the most content I've made on YouTube lately and thankfully you guys, um, like I was thinking, you know, if you're watching this, you you are a, a, an amazing, special person. If you are watching this right now, if you're listening to my voice say this right now, I'm so thankful for your uh, interest in what I'm doing and 99.9% .9 of the people that are interested in what I'm doing school related or otherwise are from my top org gaming content and I just can't thank you enough for being interested in what I'm all about. My goal has always been to get to a point where people are interested in the Zim, Zim as a person regardless of what I'm doing, whatever top or rideshare driving, art, whatever else I'm doing, they're just curious to know what I'm up to and that's who I want to be and what I want to present to you and what I want to tell you about is just me as a person. That's my main goal. But as I've learned and I think we know, you need something, a level, I don't know, above or below that, I don't know which way it would be described, but you need some kind of container for that first. You need to get people interested in you for another reason and then eventually they'll come over and, and hang out with you long enough that they start to want to get to know you for who you are as a person and not just for the content you're making in terms of, for me, it was gaming content or rideshare content or art content or whatever it might be. Um, but hopefully all that can be part of the story as well. So thank you so much. Basically, the bottom line is um, if you're watching this right now, odds are you're here from the gaming content. Um, and I... I'm super grateful and thankful that you are giving me your time to spend with me and um, check out what I'm all about. So I really appreciate that. So um, with the top war content, with the gaming content, my plan after my thesis, maybe I'll start right away. Maybe I'll wait till the summer. I, it would be smarter to start right away. But um, I'm going to start making more content based on the game, um, more pre-recorded videos, I'm going to I'm continue my live stream at least twice a week. That's my goal. It's, it's typically been Tuesdays at, uh, at uh, Tuesdays at reset is what we say in the game. The game resets every day. So Tuesdays at reset or Saturdays at round reset is usually when I stream the game every day. So I'll keep doing that, but I'm also going, going to make pre-recorded videos of the game as well. Hopefully get generating even more interest. There's definitely a bigger audience for my top, top war content because other creators are have a slightly bigger audience than I do making slimmer, similar content. So if I just can tap into maybe the way that they're doing their content, which is all pre-recorded. So we'll see, we'll see what, what happens there. If I can generate more interest because I'd love the ideally whatever it is, if it's game content, art content, interviews, whatever I end up doing, I want the live stream to be the priority so that more people will check out what the live stream, be check out us during the live stream. My goal is to get to a hundred people in stream every time I do a live stream, regardless of what the content is. Right now we get uh, 10 to 20 is our pretty much our average. Um, so somewhere in that range, probably on the lower end of that range is probably the average right now for my live streaming content. So 
yeah, that's the goals. Uh, so that's one thing we're gonna be doing. I'm gonna be doing more drawing videos. I'm, I wanna figure out what I can do artistically on the channel that will get people interested. I've seen plenty, plenty of videos of drawing things on YouTube that have millions of views. So what can I draw? What can I do that might inspire a few more people? Because my, the videos where I draw art, of course they're very politically motivated so that might be turning that definitely turning some people away but i'm going to start drawing things that are maybe a, well definitely less political more just like pretty pictures basically doing more portraits um and see if we can generate more interest in that maybe sell some of it as well after i make the drawing so i'm going to start this week actually i'm going to try to before the end of spring break i'm going to do my first portrait of a celebrity and we'll see if that generates any interest in the channel. Um, I'll probably have to do it many, many, many more times than just once, but to see if it really happens. But I, I think I've developed a pretty cool style, performative live streaming style of art making. So hopefully my style will be desired enough and considered cool enough that what I do with it will be cool, basically. And people will be into it and wanna follow it and get more engaged with it. So that's the goal there do more drawings, and then during the summer, I'm hoping to do another series, which I meant to do when I moved to San Diego in a lot of ways, but just working all the time in school, just things got in the way, but I'm gonna start this series kind of, I don't know what to title it, but either, there's two working titles, one is Discovering San Diego, or the other is like The Truth About San Diego. So from sort of an outsider's perspective that has been here now for five years or so, like what is San Diego? What's the truth about San Diego from a kind of, not from a fanboy's perspective, but from like a, you know, there are cool things and there are lame things about San Diego and just talking about both of them, being real about it, discovering maybe it can be a pseudo tourist kind of guide as well. Cause I'll definitely try to point out um, cool parts about San Diego that everybody should check out. Cause there's, de every, with every city, there's definitely things that are cool about every city then there are also things that are not cool about every city. So I want to try to give a holistic view of, of what it being, you know, from being in San Diego is like. So and we'll do like five, I'm trying to make, I want to make them like five minute videos of different parts about San Diego. And there's plenty of content to do there. So hopefully that'll start happening and generate some interest in the channel and views on the channel. Um, and then of course, the last thing with the YouTube channel that I really want to get going and actually is probably if I had to put a priority list together is like my top priority for the long game is doing a lot more live stream interviews. Um, it's very hard I found to get people interested in doing the live stream angle of the interview because that's just kind of scary. So for a lot of people, video alone. So that's why a long time ago when I started the Word on the Street podcast, especially I took out the video element because I wanted the path of least resistance, but now I'm discovering that I don't mind the resistance, but it just means I have to do a lot more work uh, soliciting guests because not a lot of guests want to do live stream. Not only that, but not a lot of guests have the capabilities to have a strong internet connection. So if we do do a live stream and their internet's not very good, that'll suck. So basically what I'm gonna do is start researching and prioritizing other live streamers first and start um, seeing if I can interview them. So that's gonna be my goal. I'm just gonna start researching a lot more live streamers and, and reach out to do interviews. Um, I think through Twitch and YouTube, but also like TikTok and Instagram, since uh, there'll be a degree of, of affluence with the technology. So that's my goal there. About creative, the, the, the title of the show is Conversations with Creative. So if you're making content on any platform, you're a creative period so no matter what kind of content you're making whether it be art content or just talking to the camera or dancing or whatever it is that you happen to be doing so I'm gonna start reaching out to more people like that all right last section maybe I should have changed the views and stuff so I don't know I know there's an art there's a, a style of YouTube video making that's better than what I do <laughs> but I don't know it's I just I'm more of like a let's just get it done kind of person. But um, the last section that I want to talk about is life. Like what's the plan now kind of? Like this is, I'm almost done graduate school. I'll, I'll probably do this again later on. But 
the goal, two things that I wanted to mention right off the top was I'm hoping that NFTs will become a reality for me. Unfortunately, it co you know, it's, it's the same game. It costs, kind of, it costs money to make money. So I want to make more NFTs, publish more NFTs, see if I can get interest in my NFTs. I've learned some things about NFTs. Um, and I want to get make that an actual revenue stream. Like I publish a, a set of... Because in the long run, my goal is to have less stuff. Like I do not want stuff. I want to be able to live very, very light. I want to be able to live in a very small space with a very few things, a couple of camera things, a couple of computer things, a couple of music making things, and a couple of art making things. And that's basically it. That's like all I want. I don't want a lot of stuff. Um, I think in some ways, I look around my apartment right now, this room, and in some ways it feels like there's too much stuff here, but in some ways I'm like, you know, I, I, I've pared down a lot. Um, compared to a lot of people who have garages full of stuff and storage units full of stuff and that they just never use. It's just like, whatever, why do people keep so much stuff? I don't know. I just not, I just, I'm in a place in my life where I do not want stuff. I want to live light. I want to be able to travel, that kind of thing. So, um, NFTs kind of fit that kind of lifestyle really well. If I can make NFTs something that I make and make money off of, then great you know that'll be a a, a a part of my revenue a part of my sustainability allows me to stay at an artist creative person so that's the goal it's just a matter of you know cutting through the noise um with nfts just like everything else on the internet you know there's a lot of crap out there there's a lot of just noise out there there's a lot of things so you have to elevate you have to be do more and be um, higher than I, I had hoped that you know i live in delusions of grandeur there's no question about that like I always, I'm a big dreamer. I'm a big dream chaser in a lot of ways. And I had hoped that I, the NFTs that I did make, I've published four of a set of 14 so far. Three of them are published correctly. One of them's published incorrectly, but I just left it. Um, and that is, I didn't pay for the, it's like somebody's gonna, when they buy the NFT, they're gonna have to pay the minting cost on that one. But the other three, I paid for the minting cost on. Um, because there was a glitch happening when I was trying to do it. But anyways, I just left it. <clears throat> but what I'm, I was hoping that the, one of those first four, there'd be somebody within the community I already have that was willing to just kick down. Because, you know, there's that... It's like anything. People that have money, it doesn't mean as much to them in the same way that people that don't. So it's like when, you know, my friends, people that might be able to afford what I have can only afford a very little bit, but then there's other people out there that I don't know yet that are spending massive amounts on things that for whatever reason they, they feel are as valuable, but I just haven't got into that ecosphere yet of, of it all. So my NFTs right now, I've, I have minted for one ETH, which I'm on the Ethereum blockchain. There's a few different blockchains that uh, NFTs can be minted on, but minting on, I'm a minting on Ethereum, which is the most commonly used blockchain for um, NFTs right now. And I minted them, I'm selling them for one ETH a piece. A piece. And the ETH is um, like one unit of Ethereum, which in dollar figures fluctuates all the time. Um, right now it's around $3,000. Like, like US dollars is about one ETH right now. And it fluctuates, it goes up and down. It's kind of like the stock market. Um, so to, you know, to me, I could never afford $3,000 on somebody's NFT, but there are people out there that have been doing this for a long time, have a deep crypto wallet and they can afford, a, you know, they have one, they have, they have thousands of ETH. So one ETH to them may not be a big deal, but, um, I don't know that person yet. They don't know about me yet. And so, and the reason I sold this, I'm selling this original, this first collection I'm hoping that eventually it'll turn into a valuable asset for somebody because hopefully my name, my brand, who I am will increase in value. And so that will be, it. it'll be actually be cheap for them because what you get with that one, one NFT is you get lifetime access to me. And that's the one thing I'm trying to play off of heavily when, whenever I publish an NFT, I want the digital contract part of it to be a significant portion. There's a lot of people out there that think it's just a piece of digital art. And a lot of for a lot of people, that's all it is, is a piece of digital art. Maybe they'll connect something simple like 
a free t-shirt or a t-shirt that you get with it or something maybe a print a physical print when you buy it it's something simple like that but what i'm connecting to mine right now are is access to me lifetime access to me so what you get with this original set of nfts is um a drawing lesson from me we could set it up um i could do it online or in person and that there's variables in there if it if it comes to that it's like i think i put like a three hour drawing lesson so it could be a drawing lesson you could you're basically it's a it's a ticket for you to hire me to do a drawing lesson the drawing lesson could be a one-on-one -on -one individual lesson or you could say i want you to teach this class for three hours on drawing and you can then charge 50 bucks a head to everybody that goes to the class but then I'll teach the class because you have that NFT. So what you do with it and how you use it is up to you, but I'm just allowing you access to me by buying that NFT. So the same thing goes for, I'll do an interview for you. Like if you have a podcast or a radio show or a TV show or something that you want to interview me, if you have one of my NF those original NFTs, the 14 days, 14 portraits NFTs, you get an interview with me it's just like, there, you got it. It's like, you just kind of say, I want to use this interview and I, I'll interview with you. And then the last piece, and all three of these are together. It's not one or the other. It's all three. And the last one is you get a, um, you get an artist talk by me. So if you are putting together an art forum, an art lecture series, and you want me to talk about my art and my process, you know, whatever it may be. And the irony is once one of these NFTs sells, that'll be something of value. I'll be able to talk on NFTs and art, you know, but until one of them sells, I have to, I'm in this ambiguous land of like, yes, I do make art that's, you know, getting awarded and things, but I'm very, very, very small. But once one of my NFT sells, it'll then automatically kick the value of everything up exponentially. So I'm looking forward to that happening and hopefully that'll happen soon. So, um, yeah, so all three of those things, um, a drawing lesson, an, an interview, an artist talk, uh, or interview, a, you know, that on an artist talk. And there can be a combination of that. Like maybe my inner, the interview is like an on stage interview. Maybe you interview me in front of an audience and you can charge for people coming in. If, if my brand and my value goes up enough that people are willing, want to come see me, then hopefully that'll happen. You know, may, it may not happen this year, maybe in five years from now, all of a sudden I'm touring the, you know, a circuit of art lectures. And if you have that NFT that you got at a value right now, which could be worth tens of thousands of dollars later on, because, you know, then you have that value. You can only use it once though. And then you can sell it. And each unique owner of the NFT gets that same thing for the, as long as I'm physically capable of doing these things, I will do them if I'm become too old or too sick to do any of them that's the only reason that i wouldn't do any of the things that are attached to those nfts and there's only 14 of them and hopefully my value as an artist as a person as a creator as you know will go up so those things will be of value as time goes on that's my goal that's what i want to have happen that's what i'm striving to make happen is that the value that you're getting through that nft will only go up so by buying it now um it's just it's never going to go down because I, my, my own personal value for what people perceive I'm worth will just continue to go up. So that's the goal. That's what my goal is. Um, and then who knows, maybe I'll do other NFTs similar, but you know, hopefully as I release different, um, what the uh, collections of NFTs, there'll be different things attached to them. I'll probably never attach the same level of, of, of access that I am with this first drop. Um, it's kind of a catch 22 because you know, I'm offering the most access at a time when I'm the least desired, but when I become more desired, I'll probably offer less access. You'll only get it because if you purchase one of these original, this will be like the original NFT series. This is the first drop, Zim's first NFT drop. Um, and so hopefully that value will just continue to go up and you can resell them for more and any, so half the sale half the original sale and half of all future royalties that I make off of if you decide to sell it will go to the clean air task force as well because if you don't know you know nfts and cryptocurrency is kind of synonymous in in in, in a, a symbiotic relationship with uh, energy and environmental concerns so I want to be able to give back to people that are helping make um trying to heal the environment and and, and work against 
climate change and different things that are harmful in our, our environment it's because NFTs actually all by themselves harm the environment because of the amount of energy it takes for them to live on the blockchain and all those kind of things. So I want to help my part to do that. And that's probably something I'll continue to do throughout all my work. My goal for all my work is to give back somehow, like, like a one-to-one -one relationship. Like if I sell work, part of that sale will go back to a, a charity of some kind and which is what I've been doing already in my artwork, um, on, uh, you know, on my live streams and different things. So yeah, so there's that. That's the NFT story. Hopefully, you know, if you've made it this far, you'll consider checking one of those out. I actually hope the NFT um, titles in my blogs would have gotten a lot more like people interested. I don't know. It's hard. I, got, I lucked out with the top four content in terms of getting people interested on in what's happening on YouTube. It's been massively hard to get anybody interested in anything I'm creating on, on the internet. And uh, granted, I probably don't do it the right way. I probably don't make videos quite the right way with Instagram pictures and videos and TikTok videos and YouTube videos. It's like, I'm just, I'm doing it slightly wrong to get the best, the most value out of it. But I, I haven't figured out the right way yet. So I don't know. <clears throat> There's that. And then the last thing I wanted to mention today is um, kind of what my plans are for living. Um, I was uh, basically asking you, I'm planning to stay in San Diego for a few more years. Um, what's coming up for me makes sense to stay here for both job and for my kids. My kids are still in high school and I want to still be around them. In a few years, I'd like to, I the blue sky picture is to start doing um, kind of what's called visiting lectures at different colleges around the country for art. I would love to start doing that more. So if, again, if I sell an NFT, man, there's just so much that I can contribute to this like current stage of, of art making right now, if my NFTs could actually sell. So hopefully that'll happen. I don't know. I'm asking the universe, especially one of these first ones. And then that would solve, like if, if one or more of this first batch of NFTs sold, sells like within like today, like right now, that'll solve so many of my concerns with finances, with like um, reputation as an artist, with, with so many levels of what I'm trying to achieve. If one of these first NFTs could sell, it would just instantly elevate um, kind of everything that I'm trying to do and make it all a lot easier to accomplish. Um, so yeah but then so going back to what my plans are you know i'm planning on staying in san diego eventually i'd like to do a visiting artist lecture do like two years in a different place and just do that for like the next 10 20 years and then eventually i don't know figure it out but um that's a goal of mine but what i'm asking you for i wanted to ask you a question if you happen to live or be know anybody that lives in southern california specifically close to san diego it's massively expensive to live here and I'm trying to find a, a small studio apartment or a room in a house but only in a situation where it's like there's kind of maybe a mother-in-law situation where I have like a maybe a sink and kitchen that's my in my little room or something or or separate like I don't have to share everything there's a degree of separation between the main house and me but basically studio apartment or some kind of shared living situation where it's somewhat separated um, for under $1,000 a month. Um, that's my goal is to make happen. So if you happen to know anybody, you want to support an artist um, trying to do their thing, trying to make life happen, single father, all those kind of things, um, please let me know. Reach out through the Discord or comments on the channel or my YouTube, my, my email. Uh, it's the underscore zim at hotmail.com. It's been all over the place. So I'm very, I'm easily accessible through Instagram, through TikTok, through YouTube, through Facebook, through email, through everything. Super accessible. I'm super, super accessible. Check out my website, thezim.com, for more information about everything as well. But um, yeah, get a hold of me if you have a resource that you might be able to help me find a place to live here in San Diego area um, for the next three years or so for under $1,000 a month super simple studio style apartment um that's all i really want i would love it if i found like even a room that's this room that i'm in right now is like 14 feet by 12 feet you know it's not huge but if it had a sink in the corner and a kitchen and a stove right there then my bed that would be all i needed and like a bathroom right there like 
that's all I need. That's all I want. I do not want a lot of stuff. I don't care for a lot of stuff. I just want to live simply. I don't want to. I want to play very low overhead. Um, but unfortunately, our society in America makes it really difficult to live simply. It's like everything costs way too much. So, and I don't understand it. I don't understand it. Um, but that's it for today. Thank you all so much for checking it out. Um, I think we probably. I don't know how long this video was, but appreciate it course do all the things support there's links a bunch of ways to support in the description of the video you know subscribe on youtube i'm trying to get to 5,000 subscribers we're almost there we're so close to there we should be there we could be there in a snap of the fingers if there was just a few more people that were willing to support but um that's the way it goes trying to make it all happen but um my ultimate goal blue sky goal eventually is to get to 100,000 subscribers on youtube so i can get the plaque but I gotta do some significant changes in my content to make that happen. Like, I'm hoping that art content would make that happen, but we'll see. We'll see. Because there's definitely people out. I don't know. We'll see what happens. All right. Until next time, be loving, kind, and patient. Peace, my friends.